Boys and girls, we're back. This time we're looking at how to set up triple screens in R Factor 2. As always, we'll be covering how to set this up with NVIDIA and also without NVIDIA Surround. We'll look at how to calculate the FOV, how to measure your monitors, and how to input all of that sweet data straight into R Factor 2 to get it working exactly as it should be. Let's not waste any time. Let's go. Now, just to make you aware, there will be some repetition from my other triple screen setup videos, as I wanted all of these instructional videos to be a one-stop shop. So if you don't need a section, please skip ahead using the chapter markers below. Setting up NVIDIA Surround. First, you are going to want to go to the Start menu and open up NVIDIA Control Panel. Here, you are going to want to click on Configure Surround, select Span Displays with Surround, and then hit Configure. This will open the setup surround window and at this point you must note the order of your screens. Here they are displayed in large white numbers. Working from left to right they are numbered 2, 3 and 1. Now click enable surround. The screens will go black while this enables. At this point drag the monitors in the display window into the correct order you noted before. 2, 3 and 1. Now click apply to order the screens correctly. Now we need to correct the alignment for the bezels, and this is done with these two figures. This is done visually from where you will sit, so increase the numbers until it looks correct. For me, this number sits at 44. Once this is set, click Apply again. The screen will once again go black as this sets. Now go to the Resolution menu and select Bezel Corrected Resolution. Make a note of this now. Once selected, click Apply again, and then Surround with Bezel Correct Resolution will be enabled. Setting up without NVIDIA Surround or AMD iFinity. In order to get R Factor 2 to work without NVIDIA Surround for triples, you need to make sure that your center screen is your main display. To do this, you want to head to your desktop and right click. From here, you head to Display Settings. Click here. Then you met with the display menu. Now you'll see the windows two, one, and three up at the top, and you wanna click window number one. You wanna scroll down here and head to this option, multiple displays. Here you'll have a tick box. Now you want to make sure this is ticked and it says, make this my main display. If you don't have this, the center screen for R Factor 2 will boot on the wrong screen and the triples will be skew if basically. The next step to set up triples in R-Factor 2 is very similar to the step we used in F123. If you wish to set that up for triples, I'll leave a link just above. Now you want to find out where your R-Factor 2 Steam folder is. Now for me, it's where I installed it on my D hard drive, and if you look at the top here, it's the sequence this PC, E volume D, then head to Steam Library, within that click Steam Apps, within that click Common, then click R-Factor 2, and then within that folder you want to click User Data. Within this folder, you'll find a file called config.dx11. Now you want to right click this and then you want to open it with Notepad, which is going to allow you to edit it. From here, we're met with a load of data, but there's a couple of parameters we need to change. The first of which is windowed mode. We want to change that to one and we want to make sure the borderless is set to zero. Now we want to set our custom video resolution to whatever three times our total width of pixels is for each monitor. In my case, I'm running 2560 by 1440p monitors and 2560 multiplied by three is 7680. If you're running 1080p monitors, the total width across the top will be 1920 and this multiplied by three will be 5760. Of course, the second number here will be 1080. Once you've completed this, you want to head to File at the top, and then you want to click Save. Shut everything down, and then you're ready to boot up R Factor 2, which, if you've done everything correctly, will boot directly to your triple screens. Easy peasy. Calculating the correct field of view, FOV. To calculate this, we are going to need some help from a free online tool available at this address. I will put the link in the description below. Once opened, you will be presented with this window. Here, you can adjust your parameters to obtain your desired field of view. For me, I wanted to make sure that all of my peripheral vision was covered, so I aimed for 180 degrees. Firstly, make sure your screen size is set to 16.9, and then input your screen size, minus 32 inches. Select triple screens from the drop-down menu. You will then need to input your bezel thickness. I'll show you how to measure this later in the video. 
You can then play around with your distance from the screen and see the required monitor angle to achieve your desired FOV. In my case, I felt that a 60 degree angle would work well with my room and a distance of 62 centimeters away from the monitor felt comfortable. But you can play around with these figures as you desire, but once selected, you must stick to them. To better understand this, let's look at this on a diagram. To achieve a 180 degree field of vision, my eye line needs to be in line with the most proximal edge of the monitor, the circle here illustrating my head. My screen size is 32 inches, adjust this for your own size. The distance from screen is the distance from my eyes to the panel monitor. To achieve my required field of vision, I need to be 62 centimeters away, give or take. And finally, I must make sure that my triple screen angle is set to 60 degrees. This angle will differ for yourself depending on what you got in the tool. Here the angle is taken from a line drawn from the back of the middle monitor to the angle formed by the back of the left and right monitor. Here this is written in pink. To measure this practically, you will need a digital angle measure, or in this case a set square that has an angle measurer on it. Make sure this is lined up with the middle of the monitor when viewed from the top as illustrated here. Repeat this for the left and right monitor and be as accurate as possible. How to measure your monitors. Measuring up is relatively easy and we need to take two further measurements. Firstly, we need to measure the monitor's total width. Finally, you want to measure your bezel's width. This is the distance from the outermost portion of the monitor to the start of the image on your monitor. Here, mine measured 0.7 centimeters. Inputting the data into R-Factor 2 using NVIDIA Surround. Now that we've set up NVIDIA Surround, calculated our FOV and measured our monitors, we are now ready to input that data straight into R-Factor 2 to complete our triple monitor setup. Boot up R-Factor 2 and you'll be met by the main menu. From here, you want to go to the cogwheel at the top and this will take you to the settings menu. From here, click the graphics tab at the top. Now on the right hand side, you'll see the visuals menu. You want to head down to steering wheel and make sure this is set to off. This will get rid of the steering wheel when you're in cockpit and for me, that increases the immersion. On the left hand side here, you'll notice the graphics tab. Ignore the video drive a bit. That's just if you're using full screen mode and set to which monitor the game appears on. Windowed mode, for me, I prefer borderless. I think this runs better. And the resolution you want to set to your bezel corrected width, which we calculated just before. For me, it was 7,768 by 1440. You then want to head down to multi-view and turn this on. From here, you want to click the small plus button and this will open up your multi-view settings. Now, this is probably the best example of how a multi-monitor setup should be implemented within Simulator because it gives a nice visual representation of what angles you're inputting and your distance from eye to screen. Now, you can use shared, which I prefer, because if you've set up your triples correctly, they should be mirrored on either side, or if you so wish, you can set up each monitor individually with all the separate parameters. I preferred shared. I've inputted my width, which was 727 millimeters. This calculates the ratio based on the monitors you've used. Now, if you unlink these, you can input the height yourself. However, for me, it worked fine with these linked, so I left it linked. My eye distance we calculated before, which was 620 millimeter, and the side angle is 60 degrees. My bezel gap is seven mil. Once you've calculated that, you can simply back out the settings, and then you're ready to boot up the simulator. Let's have a quick look at how to set this all up without using NVIDIA Surround. Inputting the data into R-Factor 2 without using NVIDIA Surround. Now we just need to make sure things are set correctly within the simulator. From here, we want to head to settings. And then from here, you want to head to graphics. Now, again, as we did for setting this up with NVIDIA, you want to make sure that your steering wheel is off because for me, that increases immersion. And here you want to just look at the display tab on the left hand side. Now, the video driver is really only for full screen mode. We'll ignore that. And I like to set things to windowed. Now your resolution, you want to make sure this is set to the calculated resolution you did for three times your monitor width, and in my case it was 7680. If you don't set this, it won't open up the option to turn on multi-view, which is how we set up our triples. Here you want to click the arrow here, which then allows you to click the plus button here. Now here we're entered with the same FOV settings we had before, and as you can see, I've already pre-filled them. You want to make sure that multi-view mode is set to shared. My width is 727 millimeters. My eye distance, which is calculated as 620 mil. My side angle is 60 degrees. My bezel gap is seven. Exactly as before, just click apply. Confirm, and then we're ready to rock and roll. From here, get out the settings and then head right into a race.
If all things have gone successfully, you should have now gone from this to this. Enjoy your triple screen setup. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you found value in this, please consider hitting that like button and hitting that subscribe button. If you want to see more triple screen setup videos, I will leave a link to my playlist with all my triple screen setup videos at the end of the video. Until next time, I'll see you guys very soon. Take it easy. Bye for now.